or contemporary world. But uh, uh, so um, I had the course. Uh, it started actually when uh, we had the open uh, open door, uh, open studio in us, mm -hmm. and instead to show my works, mm -hmm. my drawings, or uh, my small my, my installations, or uh, uh, that uh, I thought that oh maybe if I if I do. Uh, uh, if I if I if I plug the, my consoles that I have uh, I bring from France like uh, maybe it could uh, and I call it a video game museum uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would have people uh, who come so there was a confusion because people who came and uh, and most of games that was there and the culture of video games was not uh, much uh, the same than uh, than in Western Europe or in France mm -hmm. many people thought that the games that was uh, uh, on the screens in my studio was my, the games that I developed. Mm -hmm. So uh, that I was sure. so there was this kind of confusion. And um, and uh, uh, Tallinn is a small world. And uh, uh, <laughs> later <laughs> on, uh, I got the, the graphic design department asked me if I could uh, give a class about uh -huh. video games. Yeah. And uh, in the same time, I was uh, in contact with one artist called uh, Ap Ap Teper. Uh -huh. uh, that he was working at the National Archives, and there was the possibility of doing an exhibition, a video game exhibition, uh, uh, in their gallery. So actually, I combined, uh -huh. uh, I combined it, and uh, and during the exhibition, I met uh, uh, one person, uh, Andres. Uh, uh -huh. He's uh, uh, is my uh, colleague on this. Uh, uh, he's the co-founder co of the place. And we were discussing as uh, but why uh, this kind of events about video games uh, are temporary. So mm -hmm. maybe we could find a place and make it uh, like a permanent place where you could play like uh, always. <laughs> so uh, yes, it started from that, and of course uh, uh, I was uh, very sensitive to works so from uh, Klaus Oldenburg or um, John Arneder or uh, Serge Comte or like mm -hmm. which are like. On the same kind of sens sensitivity, mm -hmm. and uh, and yes, yeah, so for me it was pretty obvious to open a space uh, uh, that would uh, uh, zoom on uh, contemporary uh, mm -hmm. uh, folklore <laughs> that mm -hmm. uh, somehow disappeared now. Actually, I would say that this uh, publication uh, also is quite. Uh, you can say that it's contemporary folklore because it kind of uh, uh, reflects. Uh, Tallinn art scene uh, a bit yes. and uh, mm -hmm. your like uh, kind of anthropological uh, view on the yes. game uh, like um, community and yes. video games yes. like um, culture but um, as it's uh, the publication is called up up down down left right left right PA <laughs> I'm wondering like how did you come up with this uh, title well, it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's a fascinating thing. Uh, it, it's a Konami code. So the, the Konami code was uh, was a kind of tricks uh, mm -hmm. that you do with uh, the controller to access some like a hidden uh, hidden passage, uh, mm -hmm. hidden uh, levels, or mm -hmm. to unlock some uh, weapons or to unlock uh, abilities. Uh, uh, later on, it was called uh, in video games like God Mode, <laughs> uh -huh. and where you could uh, in games that you have to uh, run in corridors, then you can fly. So you have like an overview of uh, mm -hmm. of the um, yes of the the, the 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 design of the game. And, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yes, and somehow like you could uh, from that there was no rules anymore. Like the rules that you apply uh, to the these uh, mm -hmm. environments. Uh, become uh, uh, you are defining yourself the rules of the of mm -hmm. the game so you are keep playing the game but you don't play uh, mm -hmm. uh, what is uh, like the, what was uh, planned to beat the game mm -hmm. you, you are redefining your your own rules but uh, uh, to access this kind of uh, video games museum uh, we ha we found an entry point through the permanent display of artworks yes and yes. some artists who are actually been like uh, published here in Idwan before are actually their works are here yes yes few of them yes yeah so uh, perhaps uh, we would come back this uh, Konami code later on Yes, I, I was actually when uh, uh -huh. we get in, I was trying to uh, yeah. show you, uh, but actually that's a pirate version of uh -huh. uh, of uh, of the Famicom, and 
I, I try to make it work, but I'm not sure if it's uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, working on that machine. So we try somewhere else, but yeah. I'm not sure that they have right now games that working with this. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll see if we have time for uh, uh, for, uh, for it. All right. But perhaps we start with the tour. Lots of people are uh, listed in the um, tour, uh -huh, so participating artists who are in the permanent display. So, so I, I guess they all, like, uh, actually they, um, they kind of uh, uh, document your artistic development, or does it, like all these artworks that are here, they also like, um, they are somehow... See. It's like a network of uh, yeah, so, so it's network. a bit a mix from uh, uh, because like what it was very nice when we started the museum uh, it was this work of uh, composition that I found out that when I was watching uh, looking some uh, interior design uh, book uh, from uh, the nineties uh, mm -hmm. that I found uh, about uh, different uh, post-Soviet countries. Uh, yeah. uh, there was this kind of uh, very when Soviet Union collapsed, there was this uh, pop culture shock mm -hmm. that uh, there was a massive uh, pop culture cult that just invade uh, interiors uh, while uh, Soviet Union uh, artifacts uh, still uh, like the furniture, like the lamps, the uh, usual objects that was uh, very uh, cool. when you see them you identify very really clearly that it's uh, Soviet, uh, it's from Soviet time. Mm -hmm. But then next you have a uh, videotapes uh, from Terminator and then uh, Lenin Lamp and then uh, yeah. Michael Jackson uh, poster and uh, yeah. and it was uh, and I'm not from that period but it was very interesting to see that actually whatever I put mm -hmm. on the shelf <laughs> uh, next to each other like uh, it will recreate a kind of uh, nostalgia for people that uh, yeah. which are there and uh, and it's so uh, it's just for me it started to of course, I was uh, helped a lot uh, by and, uh, Andres, that is uh, local, so uh, yeah. uh, he could accurate the this, but uh, it became a very, uh, very interesting in terms of composition, like to, uh, to build uh, these uh, shelves and uh, uh, to have this uh, kind of, uh, yes, uh, um, combinations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and we had with, uh, we had from, from France, I, I have a small uh, collection uh -huh. art collection that I, I co things that I collected with time usually it's stuff that you have uh, at home uh, like on the walls or do you, uh, how do you obtain the works because like uh, too many things it's like chains yes or everything I actually residency I or like we I, I had the discussion uh, uh, there is one Russian artist uh, Nastya Ryabova mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, she started one uh, a project called uh, artist private collection Mm -hmm. And it was uh, it was online, and it was like a network of artists having artworks at, the, uh, at their home. So uh -huh. something which is out of uh, any art market, but something from a personal uh, mm -hmm. uh, overview. And uh, so the idea was uh, to uh, archive all these uh, artworks. So it was more like in term of a game. Like there was not uh, uh, like a se there was not uh, no serious expectation. It was just to play each other, like uh, how we manage to connect each other from the artworks that we have at home, mm -hmm. and uh, which are even uh, maybe not artworks, but something by an artist that some leftovers mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Or, and because our sensi we are sensitive, we are keeping it with us because uh, yeah. uh, we have uh, like some kind of affection to that person, and uh, mm -hmm. so there was this uh, archives of uh, things and. And I started to accumulate all that stuff that even Laura, uh, we had together uh, mm -hmm. from all these uh, years, mm -hmm. and see like, oh yes, we have a collection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but show this uh, work of Laura Goose. Ah, yes, yes. Which is here. Yeah, it's very cute. Uh, yeah, where did you get it? Uh, yes, yeah. What is it uh, about? Uh, it's uh, her collection that she had from bus tickets and tram tickets uh, so it's it's a bit like mixed there is Tallinn and Tartu as well so it's from uh, crowns the price ticket uh, crowns uh, it's like five crowns uh -huh. and it runs to one euro yeah. and uh, and there's a uh, like some o unknown uh, source uh, objects also from your yes, this, this one, yes. Uh, this is, uh, where we, we found it with uh, 
with Andres, actually, it was in a bunch in Buscas to Sukescus. They have, uh, uh, sometimes they have some, like, uh, boxes of, uh, of frames. Or, uh, Mm -hmm. They're just selling frames, so whatever is in the frame, actually, they are not selling for what is in the what is framed, but they are selling the frames itself. Yeah. And in one of it, uh, there was uh, one of them. There was this uh, I don't know how it is called in English, but like uh, it's a suit, like stitching, a, uh, stitching, embroidery. And uh, but it's a character actually from Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a homemade. Uh, one so it, it's nice. <laughs> yes, very nice uh, elements that fits uh, pretty well in the space. So or what else is here? Uh, here, uh, so this is uh, uh -huh. so there is uh, one artist, Evelyn Gorlier. She's a, a French artist and. Mm -hmm. to really build the interior, like he made, uh, I would say, virtual uh, cheap uh, sculptures uh, mm -hmm. uh, inside. But he used to, to play video games uh, as well, like to do, uh, I would say, even like performance in video games, like mm. uh, drawings with uh, bullets impacts uh, on the walls, mm -hmm. uh, or like this, uh, this kind of things. Uh, how how impo important are uh, video games uh, to you personally? Like, uh, uh, how, what do you know about uh, like media? I, mean, I would say Are that technically, I would say that I don't have like a, a technical uh, knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, I would say in terms of programming or uh, in terms of uh, uh, 
uh, electronics or um, uh, of course I started to develop one uh -huh. because uh, we were we, with uh, Andres we are uh, in front of uh, problems of uh, something is not working so we have to fix so we have to change the screen of uh, an arcade or or usually Andres is better <laughs> than me on that but uh, like uh, there is a like computer language or this kind of because we started to have uh, um, microcomputers so mm -hmm. when I was a kid I was uh, writing basic uh, but uh, like something that I forgot with time so it was very interesting to go back on this kind of uh, this kind of things mm -hmm. even if it's not like intense but uh, uh, but uh, then uh, uh, I lost uh, the questions it was uh, yes yes so I me I started to be more uh, my relation to video games was more, I would say, maybe in terms of uh, anthropological uh, mm -hmm. uh, way. Like um, it's uh, it's interesting to see that actually you don't have the nostalgia of a game, but you have the nostalgia of a context mm -hmm. when you were playing a game. Uh -huh. And um, and as well, uh, there is a, a, a specific thing in video games uh, interested me. Uh, is uh, and that uh, gave me as well like uh, understood that the, the idea of a museum would be perfect to have uh, as much as possible different kind of gameplay uh, mm -hmm. in a play in a space is uh, how you adapt to an environment mm -hmm. and uh, every game every generation of machines has a total different uh, way of adaptation and mm -hmm. uh, and the very first game was ultra frustrating and um, and there is this question of failure like you cannot mm -hmm. succeed until you fail mm -hmm. and uh, and then you need the infinite lives. Yes, yeah. and then you can yeah. pass over it. Like yeah. and you, not every game, but you always mm -hmm. can try to find a way to uh, to cheat and to pass over, like to uh, yeah. like the, the backstage uh, door or uh, the back door. <laughs> but uh, even if you have like, uh, it appears to me like that you have initiated or you are involved with other people in initiating like new. Uh, new like associations or organizations like self-organizing initiatives like this video games or the showcase gallery mm -hmm. or uh, we art center mm -hmm. uh, actually here maybe we could also see the infinite life gallery ah uh, yes but it's under construction uh, can, under construction but we can, uh, can have a look yes. because uh, maybe you could uh, please tell them uh, what is this infinite life concept because it's a concept no yes yes uh -huh. so the you are uh, um, teaching, you are like visiting lecturer at the Stolen yes, Academy yes. of Arts. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, yes, this uh, semester I was uh, I, I giving class in spiders now in Mika, uh -huh. in a different department. This year I was in charge of the, uh, for the masters of the sculpture department. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, yes, and uh, yes, and uh, actually the museum somehow like is a, as well a tool, yeah. pedagogical tool. Like yeah. I'm giving my classes here as well. And, yeah. uh, so it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's surprising at the, at the first time for few of them. There we are. What are we gonna do there? Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Really? Well, what's the what's the relation to the? For most of the games and the mission here, I would say there is no connection. Actually, mm. there is no connection with mm. the exhibitions in this uh, uh, in this gallery. Uh, there is no connection to video games uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not a uh, place to. I, I mean, I'm not even not running the space actually. Sigrid behind the camera and yeah. uh, uh, Brigitte, Patrick. Uh, Are there any works uh, here in the museum by the uh, upcoming, becoming artists who have, have exhibited here? Oh yes, yeah. there is something coming. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a uh, the works there, but it's related to this uh, pirate uh, things I was talking about. Uh, so there was this exhibition, so it's, it was exhibition act <laughs> by Camilla Aureli, uh -huh. and uh, and so I uh, so Game Genie was actually like a, a cartridge that uh, to 
to, to cheat in games. Mm -hmm. So you could uh, put uh, some kind of code mm -hmm. and uh, you, it was a cartridge that you put like an adapter. You put in the machine, in the console, mm -hmm. and then you put the game on the adapter and then you could change the codes of okay. the game and like, yeah. and like transform totally the games and do whatever you want from it. And uh, one of these uh, adapter was called Game Genie. Okay. And um, and when you take, for example, the uh, it's pretty funny that it's things that I, I discover here. It's like here you have, for example, that was the kind of cartridge you could find in Estonia. It was uh, super 80 in one, so it was 80 games in one cartridge. Okay. But me as French, we never had such kind of uh, yeah. thing. So of course, all the games were pirated. It's totally unofficial. Uh, yeah. An artificial uh, game. So I was just uh, so and to pass over uh, like the police of the market police, they were changing sometimes the names. Like uh, Super Mario could become Superboy, uh -huh. uh, Prince of Persia uh, could become uh, Prince of Rosia, yeah. and like that. It's not really. It's the same game, <laughs> but uh, it's not the it's not the game. Uh, but all, it was. And sometimes the game were had some problem. You couldn't play it. It was badly encoded. So. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's uh, uh, it's interesting for me because like these kind of things actually are not uh, 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 are not uh, considered in video game history. So my idea like was to build an exhibition yeah. as the same way these cartridges were uh, were, were made. So I actually <laughs> I put uh, actually the name of the gallery Infinite Life is coming from a video from Bo Body Condom. Uh -huh. So I wrote Condom, but okay. it's Condom. Actually, I made a mistake voluntarily in every names because yeah. uh, I actually I pirated every artworks yeah. uh, from uh, the artists which are there. So I, I changed the names as well because like that I was sure that I it yeah. was not them. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the idea was to uh, like to uh, to build a kind of pirate exhibition. Uh, so it's a it's a, uh, it was one of the exhibitions that was shown there. But here is uh, also our uh, camera operator's uh, illustrations that were exhibited. By uh, Sigrid, yes. It was uh, exhibited uh, in the gallery? No, not yes. in the gallery. Ah, yes, in the gallery. Yes. Uh-huh. All right. And, uh, and also Marco Leimra was... Uh, uh, ah, here no, we have... Was, uh, that was another exhibition. No, this one was part of the... Actually, it was exhibited uh, for Game Genie. Uh -huh. It was a visual from the performance he made in the uh, Opus Epea gallery. It's there. <laughs> so he locked down in the in the gallery and uh, playing uh, FPS for uh, uh -huh. for I think it was for a week. Well, I don't know how much uh, Estonian uh, audience knows about uh, French artists, but I'm sure that everyone knows Marco Leimre. Mm. And uh, what is your relation? with him because uh, like uh, you seem to have a common interest now in the I think it's, uh, uh, it's one of the first artists I met mm -hmm. uh, when I went to Estonia it was interesting because we didn't uh, uh, it, it was a pretty harsh uh, uh, first contact uh, but um, yes I was interested in, uh, in activism uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm still interested in uh, activist practices anyway generally mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, I just uh, I was uh, like interested about uh, uh, Marco uh, Marco works and I knew that from other people uh, uh, I knew his work from from uh, from 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 other pe different people uh, from uh, art field in, in, in Tallinn uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps but, uh, shall we go to see because there are also some Marco works uh, yes, uh, actually it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because uh, yes, we have two uh, so, uh, with, the, uh, with the Marco was authorized uh, the, me to uh, put uh, two of his paintings uh, in the museum and actually uh, it, it's nice because like the, uh, these two paintings are part of an exhibition that I, I, uh, I, I curated uh, uh -huh. a few years ago and that was called Infinite Life. Yeah. And uh, so it's a kind of continuation uh, uh, from uh, from that, and I'm very glad that after this exhibition called the Infinite Life, that these paintings finally arrive. Uh, so inf Infinite Life exhibition was not really related to uh, video games, but more about uh, uh, augmented reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, so by so by default, it was somehow like connected with uh, already uh, suggested. Uh, 
uh, how video games as well are interested by this uh, technology but uh, my idea was uh, that uh, augmented reality is uh, when you heard about it like usually it's a technological concept but it's interesting like if you in terms of uh, uh, art practices, uh, maybe art is an augmented reality or uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was maybe I played on mm -hmm. and uh, and here like this painting for me like it's very illustrating or illustrating is not the term but like it has an echo to that like to that uh, augmented reality like uh, how you are uh, you try to uh, 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 build, build up your imagination yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, and it's concrete, like it, it concrete, like it becomes something, uh, something um, uh, um, a role, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, well, which is uh, so here, like for example, here it's a painting that was made with a student from the interior design uh, of Eka. Mm -hmm. So we had the serials, a bunch of them, but we managed to save a few of them. Like we have two. So this this was one uh, assignment we made with uh, Anash Kodenko. Uh -huh. And uh, they had to uh, reproduce uh, uh, landscapes from uh, uh, virtual uh, mm -hmm. world of uh, Irul, which is the world in, uh, in uh, Zelda, Zelda. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bre uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah. So of course we didn't put any. Uh, there is no. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I don't need to explain that. Uh, I mean, to put like to put a label, or uh, I'm not interested in in the fact that people have to recognize uh, Irul mm -hmm. or. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I like the idea that uh, uh, they could expect that maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's some landscape in France or uh, mm -hmm. is it uh, Carcassonne uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and to imagine uh, like something related to real uh, to our real world but took from uh, uh, took from uh, fantasy. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the maps are like uh, very like uh, important uh, like tools for uh, strategy buildings. I can see that you have also some other maps yes. on the walls from the... But I think it's something obvious because like now video games you need uh, architects. Like uh -huh. you think in terms of uh, the games are, is an architecture. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think the maps uh, is something, maybe it's now, nowadays it's more like a goodies because you don't need a map anymore. Like you have your uh, GPS uh, in your phone and uh, I think that these maps were Mm -hmm. Maybe relevant at some time, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, I like the idea of. Uh, there was a, I think it was actually like it's a coincidence, but I read this book of Erwin Ver, but Erwin mm -hmm. Ver made uh, these uh, maps from different. Uh, he mm -hmm. took uh, extract from different countries, mm -hmm. and he put together. But I don't have it. I don't no, have this uh, work, especially. But uh, I, I just because I remember that I have this book from uh, Erwin Ver. Uh, ah, here we have uh, oh, Céline Gornier. Uh, uh -huh. So it's a, it's a donut made from ceramic. Ceramic by uh, so it was made as well in the highly studio. Uh -huh. So of course I had the Sims. I am the owner Simpsons. We can be together. And uh, he actually forgot about the budget in the jacket. Ah, yeah, ah yes, you're right. And I forgot to place it. So there is the here. Ah, I managed to place that yesterday, last time. Like uh, there is the cue from. Uh, this is from uh, Alexand Alexandra Galkina. Uh -huh. uh, this is uh, a badge from Museum of Museum. And this museum of museum is collecting uh, like uh, yeah, so exhibition mm -hmm. merch or I don't know how far they are active now, mm. but uh, it was a French uh, French collective, uh, uh, and actually one of the editor of uh, it one was one of them. But as well, uh, it was uh, Stéphane Desplan, so it was Eleonore Panosavoni and Stéphane yeah. Desplan. Uh -huh. So uh, based, it was uh, mainly it was like. Uh, uh, um, a furniture where uh, was classified every uh, artifact from uh, museum visits, mm -hmm. like uh, flyers, uh, yeah. ticket entrance, uh, uh, whatever was coming from uh, uh, yes yeah. leaflets and mm -hmm. so on. Yes, exactly. And
that we're holding in your hand. Oh, this is one badge from uh, Ivars Gravelais, uh -huh. photographer, and that was a present uh, 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 by uh, uh, Alexandra Galkina, and it's uh, it's uh, uh, from uh, Yoko Ono. Uh -huh. It was a Yoko Ono exhibition, I thought. Uh -huh. Johnson, yeah, Johnson. Mm -hmm. And this is the suit is, uh, itself, like is uh, is Mings. It's a uh, Miriam Miriam Ribon. She was uh, one of she's a student in uh, Grenoble Art School. She was interns. Uh -huh. uh, I have uh, I, I had a lot of interns uh, yeah, from yeah. Uh, from abroad that uh, made their uh, Erasmus at my studio. So she designed. She <laughs> she actually she stole my. Uh, my uh, Pen uh, pencils uh, yeah. to uh, <laughs> to draw on the to draw on the jacket, but I liked it very much. She found in Uskas to Sukesku, she found this jacket and she started to draw on it. Unfortunately, she didn't finish it because she had because of the pandemic she had to to leave yeah. uh, right. uh, to leave Estonia. Unfortunately, but you got your art education in the southeast of France uh, in Annecy. Uh, PhD in Annecy, yes, and, and master. Then, then uh, master in Grenoble. Yes. So like. Uh, do you still have contact with uh, the people? Yes, on the people that used to work uh, it's not with the art center. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on some other uh, some other projects. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, I, I'm still in touch uh, with them. Of uh -huh. course, like distance made the things less uh, uh, practical. But uh, and uh, of course, uh, I'm running showcase in Grenoble. Uh, yes, so uh, I'm running, of course, by distance. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm working on the programmation and uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Pascal Rieu, which is uh -huh. as well yeah. uh, the, the one of the editor of the of Ridwan, yeah. and and um, one uh, uh, with. Uh, uh, Geoffrey Michel mm -hmm. and Geoffrey is an architect mm -hmm. and he was one of my students when I was uh, uh, teaching at uh, in high school uh, mm -hmm. a decade uh, ten years ago oh my God. you yeah. have quite a career of uh, pedagogy then. yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes and uh, and I was working uh, before to leave I was uh, teaching uh, in the Sciences Po uh -huh. uh, for uh, for two years mm -hmm. but I, then I moved to Tallinn so I quit the, the contract and I was uh, as well so I was uh, teaching with uh, Eleonore mm. so uh, yes it's part of the same uh, nod yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, and as well uh, yes Ant Anthony uh, Anthony Lenoir is uh, as well uh, art historian and uh, mm -hmm. teacher so yes uh, showcase is as well uh, in Grenoble is a part of uh, like yeah. Making, uh, keeping the, the contact. Uh, I think Anna Skodenka was also in Grenoble with Riley. Ah, yes, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, with this uh, residency, yeah. so exchange. So mm -hmm. Riley and Anna actually were supposed to exhibit, but we made the, uh, we made the exhibition anyway because uh, because of COVID, it was not possible to, uh, to trip. So the idea was to build some. Uh, uh, Anna Skodenko made uh, a draw uh, like a sculpture, mm -hmm. pen, uh, sculpture drawings. Mm -hmm. You know, with this plastic. Uh, Ah, pen, yeah, like a 3D pen. 3D pen, 3D yeah. pen, yes. Mm -hmm. So she made some structures, some sculptures like that, and uh, Riley made some. Um, broken ceramics? Uh, no, she oh. didn't make it broken. She uh -huh. made ceramics, but the idea was to put them in a box uh -huh. and with no protection uh -huh. and to send it to, uh, to Grenoble. Okay. And of course, when it arrived, it was. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was in, so the idea was to. Uh, there was. Uh, as, um, there was. Uh, interns like assistants involved in the uh -huh. in it so the idea was that the assistant had to rebuild it but not as it was but ha how how yeah. they want yeah, yeah. so uh, they built uh, some kind of uh, abstract uh, forms like that from the, the original shape so and then for the exhibition it was in a, it was during uh, uh, exhibited during a, a festival art festival art biennale uh, mm -hmm. carbon mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's a, it's a biennale about uh, um, uh, alternative uh, space mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and showcase was invited, but so we so we, uh, there was a showcase there, and so we installed the, the works from uh, Riley and Anna. But uh, 
I know that you have also some other ceramic uh, pieces here in the museum. Let's go. Yes. Oh, yeah, so you the found the hand. Yes, yes. <laughs> so this is robots uh, made by Fabrice Crooks. Uh -huh. So we have three of them, one, two, but the third one is a bit hidden because two arms uh, broke. So, but th this is like uh, very clearly like influenced from video games uh, culture or? Uh, I think pop culture from... Uh, from uh, <laughs> Fantastic. Film. Yes, yes, uh, and uh, as well, uh, you know, uh, science fiction, Asimov, and, yeah. and, and so on. Like uh -huh. Fa Fabrice Crooks is very fan of this uh, kind of literature, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course, like uh, I think it's inspired a lot uh, by this uh, character. It's, it, it's ultra famous in, uh, uh, in Japan. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Gundam. So it was this uh, robot that which are uh, actually uh, they are controlled by one human and mm -hmm. uh, and they try to so it's uh, it's a kind of it's uh, on earth in the future and they try to uh, they, they, it's uh, army defense to try to defend the world against uh, some forces and mm -hmm. so, uh, yes and so I think it's a mix of it from this uh, uh, robots some uh, uh, that was depicted uh, during the I don't know if you imagine the sci-fi movies, uh, Soviet movies, uh, with this kind of uh, very uh, uh, shaped uh, robot. Uh, very clumsy ones. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And so it's a kind of mix of all this uh, uh -huh. culture, and it's nice because it's from ceramics and it's not mechanical; it's organic. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's, but it's more. Yes, it's more. Uh, I think it, there is no much to say. Just robots. And <laughs> this is also by Severin. Yes. So it's uh, so it's uh, negative from uh, uh, plastic cup, <laughs> and that's pedestal for it. Uh huh. But you have another like uh, un unuseful cup, like uh, by uh, Ah Jana, yes. Jana Gadirova. Yes. Jana Gadirova. Actually, I have a lot, but I only, only, put, uh, only put that one. Uh, Jeanne participated uh, at the last uh, Venice Biennial main exhibition mm -hmm, yes, with exactly, the yes. Eastern European market mm -hmm. ceramic uh, totally. sculpture, uh, like uh, installation. So she used to, in her work, like she used to fill uh, holes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know her, uh, I would, wouldn't say very well, but we had several exhibitions together. And, uh, and she uh, she used to fill these holes in the street uh, from ceramics uh, pieces from uh -huh. uh, ceramic uh, tiles. Mm -hmm. Tiles, like yeah. tiles. Yes, yeah. I, li I like I like I like her work. So, so well, not only was she, she worked with uh, cement. Like uh, there was one exhibition in Moscow we took part of. Uh, she was I, mean, I think it, it was just she was exhibiting at the same time than uh, than me. That she made this uh, kind of very this cone of cement. Mm. Uh, from the public, uh, public light. I don't know, I don't oh, know if you know, it's just crazy. And, uh, so she had an opening uh, and she was serving uh, ah, wine. It's, um, uh, yes, yes, so it, it was actually, it was, uh, it was on an invi invitation of, um, of, uh, of uh, uh, Alice Nikitinova. She's uh -huh. a Czech-Ukrainian painter uh -huh. and uh, and she, uh, one of the exhibitions was called Tape It, so she, we exhibited in Wii, uh, only artworks made from tapes. Uh -huh. And uh, so it was very cool, there was, uh, uh, yes, there was a lot of works with tapes. Uh, yeah. uh, we will not make an enumeration of it, but so it was part of the proposal from uh, Jana, so she made for the opening, she made that. Just I remember, I have paintings from uh, Alice Nikitino uh -huh. on the wall as well, because yes. I forgot to show you last time. Uh, and so, but uh, usually it was in a normal uh, uh, plastic cup, so there was a lot. And so, of course, like when you come for the opening, you, you think that, oh, cool, the wine is yeah. ready. But when yeah. you take it, actually, it's empty. Yeah. And it was, uh, so this is, was made by, uh, it was made during a meeting uh, in Grenoble. Uh, Grégoire Bergeret uh, was having, a, we were doing the same program, PhD. Uh -huh. And uh, during a meeting, he still didn't make that. We were outside and he was doing this uh, with, the, with the cigarette. And mm -hmm. I, I really love it. And uh, it's very it's, delicate. Uh, yes, yes. 
and uh, so it's, it was a nice combination. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, there is uh, Alice Nikitinova paintings. Yeah. Here, so it's some proposals she made on small uh, on small frames, canvas. Mm -hmm. So uh, you met her in uh, Prague, or yes, or in Prague, yes, mm -hmm. yes, with uh, Eva Skavlis. Uh -huh. we, we worked a lot together. So how many years you spent in Prague? Uh, not much, but uh, altogether two years. Ah, okay. Because I made part of my studies there. Uh, mm -hmm. so it was not Erasmus yet. I stayed uh, six months in FAMU, in my school, but I realized that it was not an art school. Uh, I was supposed to be kicked out from art school at that time. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so for that, I go just six months, and when I'm pissed off, I would just leave the school. But finally, it was like a big uh, hit. Uh, check out Ciao. The big hit, uh, Czech Republic, and uh, mm -hmm. and then when I finished my studies, so at the same time I passed the uh, exam to get an, uh, an official in, uh, in at the art school of Prague, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I was in the studio of uh, Michal Bielitsky. It was new new media studio. Mm -hmm. uh, Michal Bielitsky was uh, running it, mm -hmm. so I show him in wor his work, and he told me that if I want, I could could follow, I, I, sh I show him my work and he said, told me I could follow his work and uh, it was a very really good experience there mm -hmm. and uh, I, I had the feeling of something unfinished when I left and so when I got my uh, my master uh, I went back there because beer was, was cheap, mm -hmm. flats were cheap and, uh, and uh, so uh, yes and during that uh, I met Ivas and Alice uh, by mm -hmm. accident and step by step then I met uh, Half day, and then, uh, uh -huh. and then, uh, be in touch with some other mm -hmm. artists from from Moscow. Mm -hmm. So, as we are um, getting close to our uh, final chapter of the tour, we are uh, already yeah, <laughs> but uh, we still have uh, material to show you. I mean, uh, in the last room. Yes. Shall we? What do you have in mind? I have in mind uh, uh, one of the. Uh, many uh, association, associations you have been involved with this uh, Dick Manhead uh, Head label. Ah, Dick Manhead Records, yes. yes. So, so it's a fictive label. Uh, actually, I, I've been lucky that I. So it's, uh, it was a music label that was made uh, uh, when uh, we were students and uh, uh, different parties. So it was, it was cool, like it was. We were. Uh, we we used to produce some stuff that you don't know what to do. It was at the time of uh, MySpace, so with MySpace it was very cool. Like you could, from one email address, you could create whatever profile. Like it could be a, a DJ from Iceland, or you could be uh, uh, having a metal band uh, from Canada, or like <laughs> whatever. So it was uh, interesting to develop some mythology about. Uh, about uh, uh, fictive bands, but so uh, and the so idea. So it's mainly it's uh, it started with Claude Coupier. Is that you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, at that time I was playing Digi Mobile Phone, so I was making. It was before the. Um, uh, it was really. Be it was before the uh, smartphones. Uh, it was possible with the Sony Ericsson with this. Actually, that's. <laughs> Young punk. So with, uh, it was with uh, these mobile phones. Oh you my could, God. Uh, you could, uh, there was a program to make your own uh, ringtones. And uh, I was using this program to actually uh, uh, to program music uh, to play. Like, uh, so it was very basic. It was like there is a software called Loops. Uh -huh. It was very basic. Like you have little loops which are prepared and you just copy paste. And, um, and I had one friend that was on the, on the drums and yeah. then I was playing the tracks from the mobile phone. Yeah. So the mobile phone was connected on the mix table okay. and, uh, and I was just... Uh, <laughs> sometimes I was uh, live in mixing on the phone and sometimes yeah. it was already recorded and, and I was performing on it. And, 
So what is the recent uh, release by... Uh Yes, but uh, the Kelman records, yes, it's uh, is uh, like it's it's constant. Sometimes it's more active than depends on the events, or sometimes yes, it's uh, mm -hmm. but it's uh, yes now and start to be uh, pretty like uh, this uh, book was uh, for the actually for the ten years of the uh -huh. of the label. Oh, wow! Yes. So, do you produce uh, many uh, books uh, publications uh, yourself? Not uh, myself. But uh, you have an extensive library, which uh, partly is here, but... Uh, yes, but yes, for sure, I, love, I, I like very much, I love books. Like I have a very I have a pretty cool collection of uh, stuff, yes. Yeah, maybe you can show the book, uh, this rarity of Ivar's uh, Gravelet. Ah, yes, yes, uh, Ivar's Gravelet, I showed it to you last time. Yeah, but... Uh, in yellow color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my early, early work. Yeah, pop, pop, pop. Oy, oy, oy. Where it is? Or oh, this Ravin, uh, David Organyan. David Organyan. Or. Yes, but I should have it. Uh, ah, yes, it's a flash sculpture. In the meanwhile, we show you this flash sculpture. That was also Actually, it's interesting the flash sculpture because now flash is uh, outdated. I mean, like on most of the uh, web browser, like Chrome can't uh, read anymore flash. Uh, so the only possibility to read this uh, picture. Uh, uh, ah, here it was there. Uh huh. So this uh, Ivar Skravlais is a Lat Latvian photographer who started uh, to take photos in a very early age, like when he was 11. And the photos he took were um, super impulsive. Yes, he was uh, like playing with his uh, friends, classmates. Uh, making a lot of experimentation and joking with the uh, feature and uh, completely like uh, <laughs> completely uncensored uh, photography. Yes, yes, we should be careful, maybe. I know <laughs> there are some scenes which cannot uh, like go through Instagram. Yes, it will be filtered out. Uh, yes, yes, maybe. Maybe the whole video will be uh, erased. Yeah. Wow, so this is cool. This is a uh, many archive, but it's in Russian. Uh huh. So this is the data again. Uh huh. It was a retrospective catalog. Uh, I'm trying to find the band catalog. But. Uh, my impression is that uh, um, Russian artists may tend to be like politically uh, very like um, aggressive or radical yes, yes, very often, because yes. they are always uh, troubled with uh, censorship. But I think it's because uh, the works that are usually known because it's uh -huh. uh, played with the censorship. But uh, yeah. most of these artists are it's not their only production it's just part of it but of course like when it's related to uh, when it touched to the uh, to, uh, to political to a political situation uh, mm -hmm. uh, to a specific person uh, related to the power so of course uh, it makes uh,
nationalist. I know it's not about uh, like yes, they had. They are from yes. The idea of resistance is not something related to a war, or is not something mm -hmm. related to a specific power. It's more uh, related to uh, your. Uh, it's a social statement. Mm -hmm. So it's not about. Uh, uh, I think it's not about just a system or just one person. It's, so it's a, it's a it's a resistance against maybe uh, ourselves as well, or, uh, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, like that's why we call uh, we are experimenting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to try what we are not used to do. So we try to uh, to resist uh, mm -hmm. to to resist what uh, behaviors <laughs> should uh, should uh, drive us on the, on the path. But uh, and if I try that or that, mm -hmm. and, uh, how how it will look like, and uh, so. It's based off, uh, I think, an art practice. It's mm -hmm. uh, constant uh, experimentations. Mm -hmm. Do you find mm -hmm. your own like art practice more uh, related to making objects, or more like it's an acti activity? It's like uh, I think like some it's kind of a principle to yes, live. I think it's just it's uh, an, an, uh, all, all over. No, uh, uh, it's uh, all over. Yes, all over. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. Uh, like uh, I like to consider the museum as a as an art piece, mm -hmm. uh, but as well I'm doing performances, mm -hmm. so uh, I cannot say that uh, my perfor performance or uh, an art piece mm -hmm. has uh, the, the has to be considered uh, less than, uh, uh, for example, uh, I made for many years these uh, small uh, uh, strikers in, mm -hmm. from ceramic, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, there were exhibitors in EKKM. Uh, as, as well, yes, mm -hmm. but in many, mm -hmm. uh, in many different uh, places, like mm -hmm. Moscow as well, mm -hmm. uh, in France, in uh, I think, forgot, uh, forgot, uh, all the places where it was exhibited. But, uh, so, uh, or like I, am, I made a long series of drawings and I keep doing something. Now I'm, I'm a bit handicapped with drawing because I used to draw on the messenger drawing applications and uh -huh. uh, they made an update, update uh, recently and I cannot draw anymore uh, okay. on it but um, yeah so uh, it's more like a, it's more like a, yes that's why I'm intermedia artist yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a very specific uh, term for that uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so yes yeah, so I can play the performance I can uh, I can uh, I can uh, play there. music yeah, uh, I can do videos mm -hmm. I can draw I can Mm -hmm. Sculpt, <laughs> sculpt. Mm -hmm. uh, I can do a video game museum, and, yeah. uh, and then uh, finally, all that. Uh, I think the medium uh, is an excuse to actually uh, zoom on, uh, to zoom on uh, over, uh, um, over uh, domains, over uh, medium, mm -hmm. and uh, in art in to to zoom on over uh, art, in in art intentions. That, mm -hmm. uh, are not specifically related to video games or specifically related to, uh, yes, to a specific uh, domain. But, uh, yes. uh, before I go to the last question of the tour and the presentation of uh, Iduan magazine, uh, you, you feel free still to... Uh, Sorry, I interrupt. The main reason no. is because I have... Now I can play a table football. Uh, the main reason of a museum. Yes. Yeah. Actually, if someone uh, wants to test expect. his skills on table football... Yeah, I guess that's what people expect you to do all the time. Like to play table football? Yeah. I'm expecting that's this from people. <laughs> so I want people to, uh, to come to play table football. Yeah, because why else do you make a video games museum? Of Just course. To play, <laughs> play all the time, 24 7. Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, uh, table football needs uh, players uh, like, uh, alone. It's, there is no table football so for one player, unfortunately. Uh, do but what was the last question? Yeah, I was just uh, uh, thinking to ask uh, Sigrid if you have noticed any questions in the feed. Not yet. Maybe uh, if they take a while. But any, anyhow, I encourage you to ask me questions. Um, but for the last question about the... I mean, I want to ask about the magazine itself, like, uh, what does it mean for you to uh, have your interview here? Because I know that you are, like, close with the editors of uh, that and uh, mm -hmm. Ido Iduan and um, in overall, like, uh, 
was it like succeeded in your deal? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the difference uh, is that yes, most of the since I opened the museum, most of the literature was published was about uh, uh, about that uh, come to play. Uh, yeah. uh, we opened from uh, three to ten. So yeah. uh, I had occasion with some interviews uh, where I was. Uh, talking about, about some uh, artifacts mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it was funny that at the end when it was published like they removed everything <laughs> like just oh, what he's talking about like, uh, yeah. it's uh, just uh, just a place for kids to come to play video games yeah, yeah. but uh, yes uh, so it was nice that actually I had uh, this possibility uh, with uh, Pascal and Elona and uh, Coralie to uh, uh, to, uh, to discuss uh, like uh, get like really like more deeply about uh, mm -hmm. how about deeply I don't know if it's the term but at least like to uh, to get a more uh, general view of uh, how this uh, mm -hmm. how this is coming from and how it's connected to my uh, mm -hmm. uh, art practice so exactly. yes, and, mm -hmm. uh, and usually when you are alone in this thing you know like mm -hmm. <laughs> you you are thinking the things in your uh, in your mind like that and uh, so it's, it's always, uh, uh, at some point, uh, it's good that there is a kind of uh, ping pong, yeah. <laughs> a kind of pong, <laughs> pong exchange with someone. But I thought that the uh, biggest uh, like, uh, discovery that I made uh, while reading this book, uh, the video games in museum, is just a smoke, green, s smoke screen uh, behind which you could uh, do whatever you actually yes, want to yes. do. Mm -hmm, exactly, yes. Yeah. yes. But uh, yes, it's. Uh, but that's why it was as well. Like the title is uh, this uh, Konami code. Like yeah. it's direct, like you can. Uh, uh, so of course, when uh, some people are here, like I'm playing the video game museum, uh, the video video game, uh, the museum keeper. But like if people uh, ask more questions, like mm -hmm. of course I'm, I'm going more. There's a question. Uh -huh. Do you guys have any video game themed exhibitions planned? Like a curated corner from a specific developer or genre or era? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have some events sometimes organized with some. Uh, actually, the, the, the place is uh, in itself is uh, it's uh, is uh, is art to man maintain. So, but we are totally open. We had sometimes uh, events organized, but because someone came to us and asked if they could organize something in our museum. So of course <laughs> we're open for that. So last time it was uh, uh, last time it was for uh, Smash Bros. Uh, contest on the Switch. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some people asked to organize, like some punk band uh, asked, like if they could organize a concert uh, here. So we said yes. But of course I would have like a pop-up uh, book uh, store uh, or a festival. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, uh, Yes, like any, any kind of uh, mm -hmm. kind of events, but of course we have to see like how far it's possible and so on. But uh, yes, so mm -hmm. and um, but uh, uh, yes, we had some uh, board games associations as well. Came sometimes like to organize some board games, uh, board games, board, ga board games, uh, contest, well not contest but nights. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, this kind of thing and exhibitions, of course, uh, with. Uh, with the, with the gallery, when there is the opening, usually the museum is, uh, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is as well a good occasion to, <laughs> to play the games uh, and uh, mm -hmm. to open it. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Okay, well, let's uh, call it a wrap and uh, I guess uh, that's it with our uh, uh, tour at the video games with uh, Camille Laurelli. So thank you everyone for uh, joining with us.